Let's dive right in. Today, we're looking at two quick routes to making a common figure, wire mesh networks. We'll focus on this graphic of a porous thermochromic nanofiber membrane from the Kim Group, published in Advanced Functional Materials on March 7th. I'll link the study in the description. To begin, make sure you're working with Blender version 3.1 or later. For this technique, we're going to use one of two available add-ons. The first is Arendelle's Advanced Geometry Nodes Toolkit, which is currently 15 euro on Gumroad. It's well worth the price in my opinion, and offers tons of extra tools beyond what we're using today. It's also being consistently updated. The second option is Curtis Holt's Bygen version 9, which is available for free on his Gumroad page and is also incredibly versatile. We'll start with some common setup features for the basic plane and materials, and then add in the wire mesh. I've added timestamps below. Starting off in a new scene in Blender, we're going to come to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and make sure that the add-ons that we need, either Bygen or the Arendelle Toolkit, and Node Wrangler are all enabled. You can very simply check that the add-on is enabled by making sure the box is checked. If you need to install the ETK Core or the Bygen add-on and you've only just downloaded them, simply go to Install, navigate to where you've downloaded the zip file, and choose to install it. Once the check marks are on, we're ready to go. I'll start by deleting the default cube with X and hitting Shift A to add in a simple plane. I'm going to come to edit mode with tab, hit S and X to scale in that direction, and then two for two times. I'll right click, choose subdivide, and hit Shift R a few times to get a good number of subdivisions. From here, I'll tab back into object mode, come to the modifier properties tab, and I'm going to add in a simple deform modifier. I'm going to switch this to bend, and very quickly with control or with Shift A rather, I will add in a empty plane axis, hit R, X, and 90 to rotate that 90 degrees, come back to my plane, and I'm going to choose this empty as the origin. You can now see that I can bend in a half pipe in this direction along X, but for our case, we're going to bend along Z, which will extend this way. I'm also going to set this up to only work on one half of the plane. To do that, I'll hit seven on my number pad for a top view, control tab, and select weight paint. From there, I'm going to select the gradient tool and dragging from the right, I'll drag a gradient until the light blue just touches roughly the halfway point. From here, I'll hit control tab to come back to object mode. And now changing the angle with my simple deform, I'll come to restrictions and under vertex group, I'll choose the newly created group. And this will restrict the bending to one half. We'll make this a little bit more obvious, say 100 degrees. Before creating our material, I'll quickly come to the render settings and change the render engine from EV to Cycles, and I'll change to GPU Compute. Everything that we're doing today is going to work with EV as well, but I prefer the way that Cycles looks. To set up our material, a simple rainbow gradient, I'll select the plane, come to the shading workspace, add a new material, and rename this Heat Map. From here, I'll add in a simple converter, color ramp, connect the color into the color of the principal BSDF, change the far right toggle that is black to red, change the far right toggle, which is white, to purple, and go from RGB to HSV and change from near to clockwise. I'll then add with the plus icon, move this position to about 0.67 and change this to a royal blue, and then press plus one more time to add a green, switch back to RGB and change from linear to ease to get a nice smooth gradient. To apply our nice heat map uniformly across the plane, I will select the color ramp, hit Control T, and make a few changes here. I'm going to change from UV to generated coordinates, and I'm going to select the image texture node here, and with Shift S, I will replace it with a gradient. From here, I'll grab our plane, right click, and shade smooth. Of course, if you wanted to, you could also make adjustments to the material itself, changing it to metallic or transmissive, altering the roughness, or even adding extra controls for the color. For now, we have our material, and so we're going to go ahead and create the wire mesh. We'll start with the Arendelle Toolkit, as it is much faster. Simply select your plane, come to the Geometry Nodes window, add a new Geometry Nodes tree, and with Shift-A, navigate to the Arendelle Toolkit, Curves, and Wire Flood. Place this node between the input and the output, and now it's a matter of simple customization. I'll bring the density up to a value of about 200 to start, and I can now change whatever aspect I'd like, such as the resolution of the wires for a heavier or lighter scene, the wire height, which I will lower to about 0.2 for my purpose today. I can add some wiggle, about 0.1, to make it extend beyond the boundaries, and I can also change things such as the radius of the wires, making them finer or thicker to my liking. Finally, I can very simply grab my heat map 
material and apply it. And you can see we now very quickly made that nice figure of having a rainbow wire mesh gradient. And we can cycle through different seeds to see different looks on the fly. Very, very quick, very easy to do. The bygen approach is a bit more involved, but ultimately offers more customizability. Simply select the plane, hit N to open the side panel, find the bygen add-on, and under surface effects, choose Tangle. As you can see, there are a number of options to choose from, but for our purposes today, Tangle is the one we want. I'm very simply going to select the plane and choose Apply to Selected. You'll notice right away that the Tangle, or the wires here, came with their own material, and you'll also notice that the underlying plane is still visible. So there are a few changes that we're going to make. To make those changes, we'll start by coming to the Geometry Nodes tab, and very quickly, I'm going to go ahead, come to the Output window here, drag the Group input over to the side, select this Group input node, and hit X to delete it. The underlying plane is gone, and we are now looking at just the wires. I'd like to add a little bit of randomness to the values here to make it stick above and below the plane. And to do that, we're going to come to the Random Rotation socket. I'll change the Z value to 0 in the minimum and 10 to the maximum. And I'm also going to add a little bit of rotation to the Y. So let's go to a max of 0.5. And this is going to make this a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more of a wire mesh. Bygen gives us many controls for selection of which wires we'd like to use from this collection, as well as a number of options for the random scale of the different wires, their rotation. Several things are possible with this add-on. For our purpose today, this is going to be more than enough. As you've noticed, these materials need to be the one that we want to use, and they will have to apply uniformly across the plane. To do that, very simply, we're going to return to the output here. With Shift A, we'll add in a set material node, and we'll place it right here. I'll go ahead, grab our heat map material, and right away you'll notice that this is applying to the individual wires instead of across the plane. To correct this, all we have to do is go ahead, hit Shift A, add in instances, realize instance node, and place it before set material. This corrects. We now have our nice gradient uniformly sweeping across the plane. One thing worth noting is that by realizing the instances, we made a lot of extra geometry. So if I select this node and hit M to mute it, you can see we're taking 972 verts all the way up to roughly about 1.3 million. That is something to be aware of if you're going to work with a larger scene, but this is a very quick way to make this effect, and if it's going to be the single item in your figure, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Worth noting is that if you don't have to apply some sort of uniform gradient across, and you only need the materials to be one color specifically, don't use realized instances, simply set the material here. So I'll do that as a demonstration. I'll hit Control X with the realized instances selected. We'll add a new material very quickly and call this Uniform Green. Change that accordingly. Something maybe a little bit darker. And we'll just apply that. And you can now see we would have a nice uniform mesh. We don't have to worry about the gradient. We don't have to worry about creating all this extra geometry. So this is something worth bearing in mind if you have to apply a gradient or some sort of uniform texture. You will have to realize instances, it will increase the load significantly on your system. Bygen also gives us the ability to change the underlying wires being used to make the Tangle pattern. To do that, we simply have to select the Tangle collection, and first we need to be able to access it. Come to the filter funnel at the top and enable the screen and the arrow. Once you've done that, you can click the arrow so that the curves are actually selectable, and you can also enable this screen so that you'll be able to see them in the viewport. If I wanted to, I could now grab any of these curves, let's say this one, tab into edit mode, and if I simply select this middle point, hit G and Y to move this, you'll notice it's going to update my mesh and all of those wires will move accordingly. So I could add additional curves, I could add different objects. In this case, I'll demonstrate this with a cube, very simply making sure I'm in the Tangle collection, Shift A, adding in a cube, and I will tab into edit mode, scale this down quite substantially, And staying in edit mode, I'll hit G and Z to bring this up above the surface of the plane, tab back into object mode, and then just bring it over here with the other members of the collection. And you can see how I could use this to intersperse objects within my wire mesh if I wanted to. And again, I can just control this and make it, let's say, a little smaller, so it's less obvious. But it will adopt the material properties, it will sit within this mesh. This is a nice feature that Bygen allows you to incorporate. Before I go ahead and render this, I'll simply uncheck the little arrow for the Tangle collection. It will hide everything again, and now I'd be ready to set up my render and more or less finish off everything that I wanted to. 
Bygen also has an interesting feature of dynamically painting. So if you wanted to, you could apply a weight paint across and only have select areas show this pattern. It's best to start with this because if I were to do it now, it would reset all the changes that we just made to the underlying geometry nodes. So you would have to change those again. To wrap up, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of wire mesh networks made using the Arendelle Toolkit approach and the Bygen approach. Both work very well for figures and offer plenty of customizability. For more detail about great features contained in both of the respective add-ons, check out Arendelle and Curtis Holt's YouTube channels respectively. Finally, we'll conclude with a few other examples I've collected of wire mesh figures. These examples cover a range of subjects, including electronic materials, polymers, filter membranes, sensors, biological systems, and more. These are broadly useful figure elements, and hopefully this tutorial has helped demonstrate how they can be made quickly and with plenty of customizability. And with that, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing the video with your friends and colleagues, and joining the Blender for Science community on Discord. Finally, if you would like to directly support the creation of more tutorials like this one, consider joining my Patreon. Many thanks to my existing supporters who make these tutorials possible. Until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.